people have said, how, why would you want to do what you want to do now when you have the, I have the best job in the entire world teaching where I teach in Willards with the kids that I teach, with the people that I teach with, with my vice principal and my principal. I just came off six hellaciously fun and raucous and got the job done years as mayor of Salisbury. And, you know, for all of the gray hair and, and high blood pressure that it brought, it will be, you know, that's the first line of my obituary. And I recognize that and I don't have any problem with any of it. Um, and people say, and, and you changed the city into districts without the courts making you do it. You did it on your own, very progressive values. Um, why would you want to jump and do yeah. something new? And it, to be perfectly honest with you, it's to protect those places like Willard's, those schools, uh, the, the health of the women that I work with and the women in my family. In every election, and I've won four elections in the last 16 years in Salisbury, each one came down to this. I could stay home every night. I could, I could do a myriad of things that, that are different than what I do now. Every time I did it, I looked at the other person running and said, oh, I know I can do a better job than that guy. And that's, I mean, that's, it's just that simple. So the question really comes down for people nowadays is the way the national conversation is going, which has just become nasty. Is this what we want? About 24% of the population wants to hear what Mr. Harris and Mr. Trump have to say. And they have that inherent racism that's sitting there. You know, the Aegis up in Hartford County had an article about a, 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 a town hall meeting. And this couple stood up and said that now that Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid are now welfare programs, and the congressman didn't disagree with them. So he is playing on that. He is. And really, Donald Trump is all that coming home to roost. You've stoked those fears over on the far right for all this time, but they've kind of been in the shadows a little bit, the, the, the kind of real right wing. And, you know, I've got them in my family, so I'm not going to make a judgment about it, but they're there. And now it's coming back to roost because those are the people that are now running, running their party. And I think, as I talk to people from Berlin to here to Easton, is that people are really just yearning for an intellectual, dedicated, hyper-local approach to, I just want to show up and help you solve the problem that you have here. If it takes federal resources or it takes getting the federal government off your back a little bit, I, I, I believe that the television is telling us that America is so divided, I don't believe that that great middle is gone yet. I think that Mr. Harris walks into a room and figures out how to slice and dice it, get the campaign check out of the people on this side of the room, tell them those people on the other side of the room hate you, and then get out the door as fast as you can. Uh, Tea Party activists don't call him a Tea Party standard bearer or stalwart or whatever down where I live. They call him a Tea Party opportunist. Because, you know, I, nobody disagrees. I would walk through hell barefoot to allow him to have the views that he has. Is he dead wrong? Yeah, he's dead wrong. And nobody in this district, with all due respect to Mr. Crowderville and, and Mr. Uh, Tillman and Mr. LaFerla and all of, all of the incredibly good people, very hesitant to take out the two by four and whack this guy on issues. Well, you got the wrong guy. You got the wrong kid from Salisbury. Salisbury politics is rough and tumble. And this, this is not, to me, at all daunting. Many times, we don't know what a politician stands for. Now, it's clear what I stand for, and people appreciate that. I do not go into a room. I don't shy away from a room of people who are different from my In fact, I live for it. Because that's sometimes where you can, where you can get something done. I believe people are pissed both at the very rich and the, and, and, and the very poor. If the top 100 corporate executives have more money in their retirement accounts than 100 million Americans, we should be upset about that. You're creating a plutocracy. You're creating a political system that is run by only by the people who stand to profit from it. At the other side of the spectrum, you know, we just put a, they just put a woman in jail from the Eastern Shore of Virginia who was collecting welfare in both Maryland and in Virginia, and I think in the state of Delaware. Now, both of those things are wrong, but the question is, is where are you gonna direct your anger when the economy tanks and you haven't gotten a raise in four years and you're, you, you know that it's cost you 17, 18, $20,000 in retirement over the lifetime of your working, this economic downturn. One of the reasons why people aren't voting is, is I always say when I'm somewhere 
has everybody checked with the people who are serving us tonight whether or not they have health care? Has anybody checked with the people who are washing dishes? Because then you realize that, that the issues of immigration, the issues of income inequality, all of those things are happening to us right here. On the Eastern Shore, if you had not had immigrants, we would not have had the housing boom that we had between 2000 and 2007. We would not have. You go across the bridge to Annapolis, you go to any large town, who's washing the dishes, who's cooking the food? There are four things that are, that, are, that are programmed to come out of me because they are statistically true. Um, again, drop the crime rate by 50% in, in six years. And when you have a population that went up by 33% from 20, 23,000 to 33,000 people, at the same time your crime rate went down by 50%, Statistically, that's a miracle, but because the newspaper and the news doesn't want you to know that anything good is going on in the world, because we have to show the picture of the fugitive from justice, that, that didn't get out. But I Leaving $16 million in surplus and a $54 million budget every year was very, very important to me. Uh, fiscal stewardship is important. It's not conservative, it's not liberal. It's this is the checkbook and it has to balance and let's make sure we have some cushion. Um, the health of the Wicomico River, one of the most polluted uh, over the last hundred years. The, the old combined conduit systems where your wastewater and your stormwater all went to the same place. That's what we had. We swam in it as kids. Wonder why there isn't a sixth finger, you know? For the first time in our, in, our, in our river's history, a reduction in nitrogen and phosphorus for three straight years. And the first woman police chief, the first woman public works director, the first woman code enforcement director in our city, those things creating the second minority majority voting district without the courts making us have to do it. Fulfilling the legacy of people like uh, Billie Jean Jackson, uh, who were down there fighting that fight, uh, you know, 40 years ago. And I believe he's the weakest when it comes to talking about those things that conservatives like to talk about, which is freedom and liberty. I think that's his weakness. I think he makes us unsafe. Because his idea of freedom and liberty is only if you look like him, talk like him, act like him, drive like him, spend money like him. And that's not freedom. That American flag, one of the other things that I really am passionate about is my patriotism as a liberal Democrat. You can't take that away from me. And I think that's where you hit him. It's your divide and conquer, your us versus them is not freedom. The Supreme Court has already said that the Affordable Care Act is legal, twice. John Roberts practically said the last time, shut up about it unless you have a different plan. It's legal, you're done. You don't get to argue about it anymore. And I, I think this is classically the moderate district with people like Wayne, with people like Frank Cradiva, with people like Rogers Morton who, who embodied the Chesapeake Bay as a Republican. Um, I've got to run a ground game that touches about 72,000 people five times. And, and I know that. So that's good. It's not like we're going to wake up sometime in September and go, well, hell, <laughs> I think we were supposed to knock on that door. I already know the doors I've got to knock on. There, there's no doubt about it. Um,